So consequently, on virtue of being the sixth fastest qualifier, Bob Fry and that V6 Chevrolet will start from the pole position. Outside, Mark Alderson in car 52. In the second row, we have Tony Elliott in 57, Andy Hillenberg in 69. The third row with the two fastest qualifiers, Steve Butler and your fastest uh, time trailer this evening, Rich Vogler in number two. In the fourth row, Jim Childers out of Florida in car 66, Mac McClellan out of Dayton, Ohio in 73. In the fifth row, Billy Vukovic the third from California in car 21, Greg Staub in car 44. In the sixth row, we have Leon Thixton in car number seven and Jeff Bloom, a pavement specialist in car seven. In 44X, David Harrison and in car 23, Trey House. In the eighth row, Jerry Niemeyer in number 16, Andy Staff in four. In the ninth row, we have Gene Lee Gibson in three, and Benny Rapp in 14R, and row 10, Jim Mullis in car number 30, and Blake Hollingsworth in car number 93. 20 cars, the first six have been inverted. We have 30 laps, and the track record holder is seated alongside. What's it feel like right now out there in the cockpit? You're about to get the green flag to go racing. A million thoughts going through your mind, and you and here they come, and it's going to be another four abreast into the first turn. Down the drag race, down the front straight away to the corner, cleanly across the start-finish line into turn one, and it is that V6 power plant, the Chevrolet V6 leading the parade down the backstretch. So we'll see if they've got the handling worked out, and obviously that's a big change when you drop that offset. Mark Alderson in second in the white number 52 as they begin to work single file now into the third turn into turn four down believe the first of 30 circuits we'll see we'll see how the horsepower difference is on on the v8 to the v6 a common problem right now a lot of smoke coming off number seven leon thixton one of our heat winners so he will be out of contention early in the block number seven smoking he pulls to the inside he is out of the way and perhaps not laying any oil on the racing groove the green flag remains out the competition continues. There is a battle for second. Andy Hillenberg, dirt tracking off the corner. Car 69, the white and red number 69 in third position. And Vogler quickly moves up. That's the red number one of Steve Butler and the yellow number two of Vogler. And they are running right now in the fourth and fifth positions. I'll move to the inside. Oh, problem here. Jim Childers in car number 66 has pulled off at the end of the front straightaway inside wall. Look at this, Gary. Look at this. Look at this race for second. Now, see, Alderson's kind of holding up everybody here, and, and, and Bob Fry's getting away. But when these guys finally do get by Alderson, you'll see them stretch out a lead on him also. But this is a place you'd be real careful because someone can take a spot from you so easy when you're racing someone else for a spot. You have to protect yourself at all times. Well, it's Alderson in the 52 car right behind Andy Hillenberg. Then it's Rich Butler, and then it's Steve Butler. And Butler, the red number one, makes a move to the inside, trying to overhaul Vogler. Can't get the job done. Can't do it from down there because you don't have the momentum. And you're right as they battle for... Look at that three wide going into turn three. Oh, what a move on the inside. And Vogler wisely kind of rolled out of the throttle and moved back up the lane. Moved in behind Hillenberg because there was no room for three wide down there. And look at Butler. Steve Butler to the inside of Vogler. That's the battle for the fourth spot. And as these guys battle, you're right. Bob Fry in the V6 begins to pull away and put some daylight between first and second. They back off just a bit, burp some flames out of the exhaust. And Alderson is hanging on. He's got a, he said earlier he had a real strong power plant. He wasn't sure how that car was going to handle, but a very strong engine. Once He's, again, they're allowed to go to 410 cubic inches, which would put them uh, compatible with the World of Outlaws and the All-Stars. So these cars can run in several different series. Here's the pass right here. He finally got enough off the corner to get by him. Well, Andy Hillenberg moves up to second. Mark Alderson, the white number 52, drops to third. There is the yellow number two of Vogler. He rides in fourth. There's the red number one of Butler. He is in fifth position. So your two fastest qualifiers having some trouble now getting from their... Oh, they bump together coming off the corner, and they almost get together again. And Butler this time gets by Vogler. He just uh, was loose and slid right up and banged into Rich, and luckily nothing else happened. It could have been bad, Gary. Well, two veteran race drivers getting together, and as we've said before, this is to be a non-contact sport, but there's only so much room on a racetrack, and it's very easy to make contact. This looks like a looks like a 10-lap trophy dash, or it might last 30, I don't know, but it's a heck of a race for the first second. Now on lap number nine, and there goes Butler to the inside of Alderson, and making a move to the inside of Butler is Vogler. So now Butler has third, Vogler has fourth, Alderson has dropped to fifth. Tony Elliott rides behind them in car 57. There's a look at the red number one of Steve Butler, the defending two-time, in fact, defending USAC Sprint Car Champion out of Kokomo, Indiana. Began racing uh, back in 1981. Didn't take him long to uh, conquer the USAC ring. 
And there's a shot of the man from Toledo, Ohio, Jerry Niemeyer, who has been a regular with the USAC Sprint and Silver Crown Champ Dirt Divisions for a lot of years, but he took about a six or seven year sabbatical, just kind of disappeared, and about five years ago came back. You know, I can't understand why he'd stop out there. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. The car must have jumped out of gear again. Well, he's waving frantically from the from the cockpit, and he's talking to Mike Teagarden, and Mike is explaining something, and Jerry's saying, come on, I want to go. I want to go racing. Mike is explaining to him why he shouldn't stop on the front straightaway. Let's check in with Brian Hammonds. Well, Jerry came in with an oil leak, and they were making repairs to the car, but he didn't have enough time to finish the repairs before they went green. So what I think happened, Jerry tried to bring out the yellow flag again so they could finish the repairs. And I don't think USAC's going for it. So I, that's my theory on that problem, Gary. Well, I saw nothing mechanically being done to the race car, just a conversation between the cockpit and uh, Mike Teagarden of USAC. So whatever the problem was, we'll see if he uh, continues on around to the pit area or stays out on the racetrack for the restart. He'll have to stay out now because it's going to go green right now. And the green flag is flying. We are racing again at Indianapolis Raceway Park, the Hardy's Racing Series, every Thursday night here on ESPN. And Bob Fry has led from the starting green in V6 Chevrolet. We've got a heck of a race here with, 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 with uh, Tony Elliott. He's Elliott right now is in third in that silver number 57. And look at Butler. Here comes Butler. He's on the infield grass. Now that's not an off-road race here, Steve. That, that's, that's extending yourself to the limit. Well, a very exciting driver from Kokomo, Indiana, trying to become the first driver ever in USAC history to win three straight championships. In fact, only two of the drivers have won three times in the sprint car uh, title chase. Here's Little Boogie. And look once again on the inside. Those two drivers being uh, Larry Dixon and Sheldon Kinzer. Buki is having just a tremendous drive. He's going to school. He is learning. He is up to third position. He just got by Tony Elliott, rides the high groove, and he is really applying the pressure. He looks like he's about to go by Hillenburg. He looks real good. Oh, he does look good. Look at that pass. This is the best. But look at Butler. Oh, look at my. Butler passing two guys, almost three guys in a corner. Amazing. If the car could stick down there, he'd drive right by him. Well, if he were a few years older and uh, Japanese... Well, he could have been a kamikaze pilot in World War II. He's this going guy for is it. wild. He is going for it. Look at this move. Number one, Steve Butler. Came from last again. Well, now he's moving up to the third position he's in now. He's in third. Butler moves up to third position. We have five laps to go. But Butler, I think, will need a yellow flag to have a shot at victory here. Oh, I think so. I, just, I, I can't see any way he's going to catch uh, Bob. Well, Fry continues to dominate, but this ride by car number one, the red number one, the Stoops entry, is just sensational. Steve Butler, from the back of the pack, is up to third position. There's a look at Gene Lee Gibson in the black number three. They work off the fourth corner, and right now, he has a good shot, speaking he meaning Butler, he has a good shot at catching and passing Billy Bukovic the third. There's a good look at number 57, Tony Elliott. And there is the battle for second place. Second place right now belongs to Buki, but here comes Butler on the inside, and he is hustling that sprint car. He's really hustling, but I don't think he'll get by Buki because Buki's fast enough on the outside. He'll get off the corner better. I and just... look at Gene Lee, two of the best young drivers in America. Right there, Gene Lee Gibson and Billy Vukovic. And Steve Butler will yell at me and say, why do you call me a good young driver? Well, he is good, but he's <laughs> not that move. young. Look at this move. Look at that on the inside, and he slides up and makes the pass. That's amazing. Butler is up to second from the back of the pack. He is now up to second position, but the laps wind down. Two laps to go. He is out of time as far as catching the V6 Chevrolet of Bob Fry, but look at this battle for second, third, and fourth. Gene Lee Gibson, the black number three in fourth position. The white flag is being displayed right now. And Bob Fry is just going to bury these guys. Almost a half lap advantage. He's home free. Right. If Fry could coast home right now in that V6, of course, the real advantage is the weight. Look at this race. Oh, look at that battle for second. We'll follow that battle for second. And there goes Buki. Here comes Buki. Buki has something left now for the last two turns. For the checker. He, sh he should have enough. The checkered momentum. flag falls on. There is Fry. There is your winner as we go back to the battle for second off the final corner. Steve He's Butler has it. it. Steve Butler's going to hang on to it. Yes, sir. Steve Butler is second. Billy Vukovic, the third, is third. And Gene Lee Gibson is fourth. 